Every time a new decade rolls around, the headlines are predictable. News outlets and historians always like to project how the new decade will be different from the old, be it new threats, new challenges, new technology, or new culture and politics. And often there's some truth to it. Every decade has a very different feel, and especially the 2000s have brought us new technologies beyond our wildest imagination. I think it's safe to say our first year in this new decade was a difficult one for most people. But where do we go from there? Well, I can tell you up front that a lot of things are going to change, so let's dive in. The key defining feature of the 2000s was new technology. We got smartphones, the internet really took off, and the world became a lot more globalized. Fast forward to the 2010s and we find some big challenges as a result. Globalization led to vast wealth inequality and economic stagnation for many, politics took a sharp dangerous turn in response, and new technologies led to threats of hacking and cyber warfare, not to mention humanity's first major pandemic brought on by the new globalization from the end of 2019. And then 2020, the culmination of all these challenges at once, pushing the world to its limits. But we made it through, and we're in the 2020s decade now, for better or worse. And it's shaping up that the 2020s will be the decade where global culture starts to catch up with technology. Let's take a look at how things are going. Despite America's early political turmoil in 2021, things seem to be stabilizing. Joe Biden has become president, chosen specifically for his stability and humility, while various COVID-19 vaccines are being distributed around the world, and technology continues its advance as economies slowly start to recover. Will we be fine in the end? I like to think so. But not without a lot changing along the way. If you were to tell someone from the year 2000 that they would soon have no need for CDs, DVDs, digital cameras, calculators, a disk drive, flip phones, landline phones, and countless other facts of daily life, they'd probably think you're crazy. But by 2010, all of these devices and more had been conveniently contained in a single consumer smartphone easily accessible at any time. A crazy development in a short span of time. A technological revolution. These smartphones now contain all the information we need for anything at any time of day, always accessible 24-7. Technology is still advancing, of course, but how much could things really change? Well, you might be surprised to find out that we're nowhere near the limits now. If people of the 2000s were shocked to realize that every physical item could be digitized and kept in their phone, it's soon that we'll be even more shocked to realize that almost every physical space can also be digitized and kept in a little box with us at all times. The leader in this field is of course virtual reality headsets. Despite the challenges of 2020, VR companies have slowly and steadily chugged along in the background continuously adding new features, new products, new software, and new users with every passing day. Still at the early stages for now, VR is on track to become as ubiquitous in daily life as smartphones by 2030. And when it finally breaks into the general market, our world will never be the same. The famous science fiction writer Isaac Asimov once wrote of a fantastical planet of the future called Solaria where everything is managed by robots and everyone stays at home all the time, living a majority of their lives alone in virtual reality. Well, we may be approaching this future sooner than you'd expect. VR already has semi-realistic solutions to experiencing things in a virtual world, and all at ever-decreasing price points. From full-body haptic feedback suits to omnidirectional treadmills to high-resolution displays, full-body tracking, and powerful physics engines, VR already has everything it needs, and it's just making it all a little better, a little more accessible and a little cheaper every day. They even have VR face shields and suits that can simulate smells, rain, wind, or temperature change as you play a game or watch a movie. With the pandemic, virtual reality has become more popular than ever, and as sales increase, so will funding, taking the whole industry up to dizzying new heights of realism. Long distance relationship? VR. Want to play sports? VR. Want to have an in-person conversation with your friend halfway around the world? VR. Want to go on vacation? VR. Going to school? VR. 
Of course, it's unlikely that everything in the real world will be fully replaced by virtual reality in just the next 10 years. There's still that special feeling of being somewhere in person, especially when it comes to physical activities, visiting friends, or going on vacation. But as VR gets more and more realistic, it will slowly start to replace things in the same way that our smartphones once did. Sure, it's cool to see the Grand Canyon in real life, but can that really compare with the realistic experience of hiking through Jurassic Park with your friends from all over the world while simultaneously staying in the comfort of your own home at a cheap price point? Maybe not. We'll have to see. But as VR progresses, these are the sort of questions we'll start to ask ourselves. I think the most striking example of this is going to the movies. This was once a popular pastime, but has been going on the decline for years now. And with the pandemic forcing people to get used to streaming new movies from home, it's only going to continue. But what if people still want that experience of going out? What if people want to go to the movies, to be with friends, to see new films on the big screen? Well that's where VR comes in. This is already happening, and the quality of the experience will only increase as the technology improves. Just grab some snacks, throw on your headset, log into the same viewing room as your friends, pick a movie, and enjoy the show virtually. It's cheaper, easier, faster, and more convenient with more possibilities. And physical locations like this being replaced with VR will only accelerate as the decade goes on. It'll be up to us to figure out a healthy balance between these worlds and the real one. Another huge change in the 2020s will be the leveling of global economies. Not leveling in the sense that they'll all fall, but leveling in the sense that recent trends show the poorest nation's economies improving at record rates while the richest nations face historic declines. This is a natural side effect of globalization, and while we can and should be worried about it and try to mitigate any damage from it, it's good news overall. Let's use the US as an example. The US economy peaked in the 1950s as its share of global wealth reached unprecedented heights right after the Second World War, but then, a steady decline that continues through today. This can be seen as America hurting, but a better way to look at it is that the global order is balancing itself with globalization. While certain politicians try to fight against it with little success, the more responsible approach seems to be leaning into it to steer a soft landing. The United States has less than 5% of the world's population, so as wealth becomes more evenly spread due to globalization, America's share of global GDP will likely continue falling relative to other countries until it's more consistent with the population level. This is likewise for other wealthy nations, while the opposite effect is true for the poorer countries with more people. There will definitely be some discomfort in the wealthy nation as their relative positions lost, and we've already seen that happening, but the end result will eventually benefit everyone if we can keep it together along the way. The key takeaway from our recent technological revolution is this. The more people we have pushing technology forward and innovating, the better off everyone will be. Wealthy nations aren't really losing wealth. Other countries are just catching up. Once every country on Earth has access to scientific education, we can only imagine what incredible technologies we can achieve. So, along with the rapid development of VR replacing physical spaces, other technologies we can't even dream of will likely start to appear faster than we can even keep track of them. The 2020s will be a new and fascinating world indeed, but it's up to us to keep it on a good path. We can't slow its progress, and we shouldn't, but we can do our best to stay moving in the right direction. Thanks for watching the video. What are your thoughts on the 2020s? What are your predictions? Let me know in the comments and tell me if you learned anything new. I hope to see you again next time.